the rituals may vary extensively depending on demographic or geological factors, socio-economic factors, religion, race, relevance in terms of one's faith and the mode of seeking spiritual solace. Whether the body goes through burial, cremation or any other method, depending on the underlying religion or culture, each sect or religion will promote what is acceptable to their respective faith. The guidelines are pre-reserved and stringently followed. What is pragmatic is, or what is pro propagated is followed with pride and aplomb, something that is considered a taboo, is kept at a, at a distance and not spoken about. Personally, I respect every religion, to each his own. We need to understand and realize the importance of discretion. Rituals and the medium of faith accompanying these rituals, these are sensitive elements of every sect, faith and religion. They deserve respect and adherence if not understanding. I used to be curious and fascinated about Egypt, the land where the dead are worshipped with extensive and massive rituals. Preservation of the body and the process of creating a mummy is so extensive, intricate, complex and skill intensive. Irrespective of how much awareness one is blessed with, there is always a lot more that is still to be discovered. Since childhood, it was a desire of mine to visit the land of Nile and goddess Isis. However, after crossing three decades in terms of age and considering the health issues that I am blessed with, this may remain an unfulfilled desire. As children, we indulge in dreams and the notion that these dreams will come true. It is only with age and the harsh reality of existence do we realize that traveling requires financial resources which not everyone is blessed with. At the same time, an individual's life needs to be in compliance with the prevalent visa norms. The more we age, the more we realize the complexities of existence. Egypt as an example comes to my mind because of its lavish and gorgeous past. I have been a huge fan of Wilbur Smith and a book authored by him, River God. I love that book immensely. I read it in my college days. I read it three times when I, when I first read it. I, I, I kept rereading it. And then uh, many years later, almost six or seven years later, I read it again. And I, that's one book when I read it. I, when I, when, it, when I reach the end of the book, I end up crying. I don't know why. It's one book which is very close to my heart. A book which has a soul as beautiful and gorgeous as the land on which the story is based. Clive Barrett's pack of tarot deck, that's the ancient Egypt, Egyptian ta tarot. The ancient Egyptian tarot, that's, that's the deck which is designed by Clive Barrett. If you, if you have the time, please check it online. This is one author who is one of my favorite. I love the book and the deck. The deck is gorgeous. It's, it's got a life of its own. It's got a soul. It's so damn beautiful. I mean, each card is so, so in-depth, so detailed. I mean, it's, it's, every card is a masterpiece. I mean, every card has a soul. It's, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just at a loss of words when I have to describe a deck. I, I've, I've, I've chatted with her, I've, I've never spoken to her personally, but I've done text messaging with her. 